Hey there, what's going on? Coach Chris, Team Critical Bench here in the compound with Mike Zhang. Mike is a North American Muay Thai champion. So he's an expert with striking. So he's gonna teach me, teach you, all the striking that there is with, you know, in, 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 in your sport. So let's get right to it. Guys, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you, Critical Bench. What we're gonna do today is go over a couple of the Muay Thai striking fundamentals. So I'm gonna quickly give you a summary. We're gonna go jab, we're gonna learn a jab cross. We're gonna break the cross down to see what you need to do to make it clean and almost perfect. Then we're gonna get into a hook. We're gonna go into an uppercut. And I'm also gonna demonstrate a knee strike. So these are the most common weapons that you'll see in Muay Thai. I know Muay Thai has other weapons. We got the kicks, we got elbows. We're not gonna do that today. We're gonna today stick with jab, jab cross, hook, uppercut, and a knee. So before we even get into it, Chris, I wanna to explain to you how our body works. You see, when we fight, the most important part of our body that we wanna protect are a couple of key pressure points. The most vital, I would say, is your chin, your jawline, and a little bit on your temple. The reason why this is important is if somebody hits you on your chin, your body has a defensive mechanism. What happens is the chin will rattle your brain and send it vibrating inside your skull, and this tells your body, whoa, hold on, something is wrong. We need to stop, and your body will shut you down. So if you ever see UFC or boxers, or when someone gets a, even a light you know, hook across the chin and it rattles their body, they'll collapse. It's because that that body has shut down and there's nothing you can do to stop it. It's like a human, uh, it's our human body. You push that button and you're going down. And, and you almost see sometimes when it happens, if it's, if they're kind of back with it, within a matter of seconds, they're back up on their feet, almost just like, what just happened? Exactly. It's like they don't even realize Exactly, it. yeah. it's like a flash, flash knockdown. Yeah. So we're gonna get into our fighting stance. So. Chris is actually a southpaw, but we're gonna start with our orthodox stance, which means for everybody watching, if you write with your right hand, with your righty, if you play tennis with your right hand, you're gonna be in our orthodox stance. I'm gonna demonstrate the southpaw stance too. We're gonna do that a little bit right after. So we're gonna get in our feet shoulder width apart, perfect. Take a step back with your right foot, beautiful. I want you to bring your hands up your left hand is gonna be just a little bit outside your chin or your cheek, and your right hand is literally gonna be right here or almost touching it. I want you to take your elbows and bring them in fairly tight. This is called our ready position. A couple key things you wanna look out for. One, footwork. Your power from your punches does not come from how big, how strong, how big your biceps are. Where it comes from is your ability to transfer power from your legs, your glute, through your core, through your body, and out your hands. So you can't transfer power if you don't have a good foundation, which is why Chris's stance here is gonna be nice and wide so that he can properly turn and pivot and twist to generate that power. Secondly, Chris here is going to keep his hands nice and tight against his chin because like we talked about earlier, your chin is that critical button that you wanna protect. It's like your queen or your king. You don't wanna let this down because that's most important. If somebody punches Chris in the top of the head here, the forehead, you're not, he, it may hurt him. It may cause, let's say, a slight rash, but it's not gonna bring him down. If I hit him in the eyes, It'll bruise, he might get a black eye the next day, but he's not gonna completely shut down. Same with the nose. The nose, you might get hit, your eyes might water up, you might start bleeding, but you won't shut down. Now, if I land a clean punch against someone's chin, that person is going down, they're gonna be dazed, they won't know what's going on. So we're protecting our chin at all times. Now, your elbows are gonna stay nice and tight because there's also body punches. So you wanna protect your body in case somebody were to come hit you. Now, when your elbows are flared out, you can't do that. Now your, all of this is gonna be open. Now our bodies, we have our floating ribs, we have other sensitive organs that if you throw a body shot, you're gonna, it's gonna take you down also. So you wanna keep your elbows nice and tight in our ready position. Beautiful. The first technique that I'm gonna show you guys is a jab. Now a jab is the most fundamental weapon. It's often the best one to throw at the beginning of a fight um, because a jab is the closest weapon to your opponent. A jab is actually a, a range gauger. So you might see a lot of boxers doing this or a UFC fighter doing this. It's really to touch each other and know how far he is from you. When you throw a jab, Chris, what I want you to do is you're gonna take a tiny little step with your left foot 
and then you're gonna bring your left arm out three quarters of the way, keeping your elbows nice and tight, nice and pointing down. Then you're gonna flip your arm and flip it over at the very end while looking straight down the pipe and the other one, other hand, right by your chin protecting. So let's do it nice and light. One, beautiful, nice and light, nice and relaxed. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Two, good, three, good, four, five. Now, next one I want you to do is hold it out. Six, good. So when you guys are watching at home, you notice how Chris's chin is nicely tucked behind his shoulder here. This means that if we were in a situation where he throws a jab and I throw overhand right, I'm not gonna be able to hit him. I'm not gonna be able to hit his chin, which is his critical part. So he really wants to tuck that in, tuck his chin and look straight down the pipe. Now, if he hits me, he'll see me, but I cannot hit him, which means he's got the advantageous position. On the other side over here, if you guys look, you'll see that Chris is tucking his chin down with his hand protecting here. So now on this side, if he was to hit me, let's turn around this way, and he throws that jab, and at the same time I throw a hook, he's gonna land on me, and I'm not gonna be able to land on him, which means that he's protected as he's throwing this jab. So that's a jab. Next, what I want you to do is we're gonna throw a cross. A cross is gonna be thrown with your right hand. When you throw a cross, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your right shoulder, you're gonna imagine that there's a pole down your spine, so you can't lean forward and you can't lean back. What you're gonna do is you're literally gonna take your left shoulder, pull it all the way back, and bring your right shoulder forward. It's almost as if, Chris, you were pulling a rope from here, and you had a spear in your other hand, and you're literally going boom, like this. At the same time as you pivot, I want you to pivot onto the ball of your foot, driving forward with your hips. This is gonna get you to put all your body weight behind that right punch, and you're gonna be able to straight through with that right hand. Now, when you throw that right hand, I want you to keep your elbow nice and tucked down. You wanna let it come out three quarters of the way before flipping your arm and extending it out. The reason why we do this is a cross is a straight weapon, right? The fastest way between two points is a straight line. Now, you wanna get to your opponent fast, right? Because if you don't throw a straight punch and you throw a sloppy punch like this, you, your opponent might throw a straight punch down the middle and he'll catch you. So you wanna keep your weapons clean, crisp, and straight, which is why we're gonna throw our elbows three quarters of the way out and then flip it. So that being said, what I want you to do is focus on bringing your left shoulder back, right shoulder forward, pivoting on your hips and your feet, and let's see that cross, nice and slow, relaxed. And boom, beautiful. Oh, try to widen your stance a little bit to make sure you're grounded, perfect. Now when you pivot, you're gonna be pivoting so hard that this foot is literally stopping you from coming any further forward, all right? Let's do it nice and slow. One, boom, beautiful. Two, boom, perfect. Three, mm, slow down a little bit and really try to focus on bringing this hand all the way back. Gotcha. So when you finish a punch, you'll end up here. Good, let's do it one more time again. Boom, beautiful. Try to look at the target and bam, good. Let's do one more, good. Now I want you to hold it out at the end of the punch. Boom, perfect. So for the viewers there, you can see that Chris's chin is tucked nicely here behind his shoulder. Now in this situation, if we were exchanging and I throw a hook, I'm not gonna get to him. Maybe I'll hit him in the top of the head here, but like I said, that's not that big of a deal. Let's turn it around to the other side. Now, when Chris is throwing his cross, I might be throwing my cross at the same time. So he really wants to tuck his chin, protect himself, so that if I'm throwing on this side, I can't hit him. Good, so let's do another cross one more time. Boom, one more, boom, beautiful. Okay, next one that we're gonna throw now is a hook. A hook is generally thrown with your lead hand. You can throw a rear hook too, but generally speaking, the hook goes at the end of the combination of a one, two hook. So let's do a hook. What I want you to do on the hook is you're gonna lift your elbow up to shoulder height. You're gonna form a 90 degree angle here at your elbow. At this position, what I want you to do is you're gonna rotate your arm all the way around, pivoting on your foot. Perfect, and then you're gonna come back. You're gonna lift it up, rotate, come down. Good, up, rotate, Come down, good, up, 
rotate, and come down. Good. Now, when you hold your hand for a, a hook, there's two ways you can hold it. You can either have your wrist facing you, or you can have your wrist facing flat. This is completely personal preference. I've been to many different boxing schools, Muay Thai schools, where they teach one position over the other. It's really what you feel comfortable with and what your body allows you to do. Good. So let's throw a couple of light hooks just to get things going. One. Good. Two. Good. Three. Now, Chris, I want you to really pivot on the foot. Good. Four. Good. Five. Good. Nice. Now, we're going to throw an uppercut. An uppercut is actually a very similar motion to a hook. The only difference is that the uppercut comes from the bottom rather than coming from the top. So you're still going to maintain that 90 degree angle on your elbow. Rather than throwing it from here, all you're going to do is in your ready stance, you're going to drop your arm just a little bit and throw an uppercut up. Now, instead of pivoting your foot, you're going to kind of drive up with your hips and throw like that. So when you throw the uppercut, you don't want to drop your hands too much because the opening will be too big. You want to just drop it slightly and scoop up. Got it? Let's try. One, mm. two, mm. three, mm. four, mm. last one, five. Beautiful. Good. Let's try the other hand. Let's see how it looks. One, mm. two, mm. three, mm. four, and five. Mm. Good. All right, everyone. So that was the uppercut. Now we're gonna go into one of my favorite strikes, which is very unique to Muay Thai. It's the knee strike. Now, a knee strike is probably one of the most devastating weapons that you can throw as a human being. We're gonna be taking our knee, pointing our foot, and we're gonna be driving it into our opponent. So, Chris, we're gonna get into our stance one more time. So feet shoulder width apart. We're gonna take our step back. Now, if you watch carefully, the difference between the Muay Thai stance and the boxing stance is actually very similar with a tiny little tweak. In boxing, your hips are going to be completely at an angle, exactly like that. In Muay Thai, you're going to square up just a little bit. And the reason why we do this is because in Muay Thai, there's kicks and there's knees. Now, if you angle yourself fully, it'll be harder for you to launch your weapons. So when we are doing Muay Thai, we actually square up our stance just a little bit. So perfect. Hands up. Now, what I want you to do to throw the knee is you're gonna take a small step with your left foot, just a little, little step. Then you're gonna reach forward with your hands. You can imagine that you're grabbing somebody. It's an imaginary person. You don't have to grab the person if you're doing pads. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down as you drive forward with your hips, pushing from your glute. What I want you to do is to look like this. So you're gonna take a step, grab, and reach like that. You want to point your toe back so that you're creating a very small surface area with your knee to strike through your person's um, body. You're going to reach and you're going to go like that. Good. Let's have a look. So I want you to take a small step with your left foot, then reach forward and pull down. Beautiful. One more. Step forward, reach out. Yep. Reach and knee. Beautiful. Back to your stance. Small step. Reach. Good. So now I'm going to put my hands here. Let's do it nice and light. Okay. Reach. Knee. Beautiful. One more. Reach. Knee. Boom. Beautiful. One more. Reach. Boom. One more. Mm. Boom. Good. Perfect. Now, that was a right knee, which is in our orthodox stance. If you write with your left hand and you're going to be in your south palm, we're going to switch everything and put it to the other side. So rather than taking a step back with your right foot, you're going to step back with your left foot. Perfect. So try to bring your feet out just a little bit so you have a nice wide stance. Square up your hips a little bit. Perfect. So one more time, small step. Reach out and knee. Perfect. One more, step, reach, knee. Good. Now when you throw that knee, I want you to imagine you're pushing forward with your hips. I don't want you to try to lift up. I want you to lift forward so you can drive your knee through your opponent. Okay? Step, reach, and Boom. Beautiful. Let's go. Step. Reach. Boom. Good. Step. Reach. Boom. Good. Step. Reach. Perfect. Great. Feels, you know, I want to just do this. Yeah. But you got to really, like you said, Correct. trying to go through them. Absolutely. You're going to get a lot more power because 
your strongest muscle in your body is on your posterior chain, right? So rather than doing this, you're gonna be driving forward with your hips, yeah. pointing your toe and driving forward. Okay, so now we just covered jab, jab cross, hook, uppercut, and knee. Chris, what do you think we put on some gloves and we do a little pad work? Yeah, you wanna do it? it? All right, let's go, let's get strapped up. All right, so now we've gloved up. Chris has got his bag gloves on. I'm gonna show you guys two different kinds of pads. This is called the focus mitt. Generally speaking, when you're doing only boxing, um, you would use these kind of mitts. Today, we're gonna do Muay Thai with everything. So I've got on my Muay Thai pads. So are we ready? So let's get into our fighting stance. Nice wide stance, good. So now we're gonna start off with 10 jabs. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, look for the target, nine, and 10. Good, move back a little bit. I want you to look at the target and then throw, all right? One, good, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now what I want you to do is when you step, bring it three quarters of the way out, then flip and push through. All right, eight, good, nine, and 10. Good, let's practice the cross. So the cross, one. <clears throat> so I want you to keep your shoulder relaxed, push your left shoulder back, and push forward with your right shoulder while pivoting at your hips, okay? One, mm. good, two, mm. three. Mm. When you finish the punch, yeah. I want you to turn at the very end and cork right there, all right? Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Good. One more. One, two, wait for the pad. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now we're going to put them together and we're going to throw a one, two. Feeling okay, Chris? Yeah. Feel good. good. Feel good. Good. So keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. I want you to really focus on turning and pivoting with your hips. Okay? Keep your hands nice and loose and relaxed. One, two. One. Oh, one, two. Okay, sorry. Hey, let's start again. Here All right. Go. One, two. Let's go. One, two, three. Four, five. So now when you throw the two, I want you to keep your left hand a little bit closer to your face. Keep your shoulders relaxed and really try to turn and pivot onto that uh, straight spine. Gotcha, All right? Gotcha, yep. One, um, um, two, um, um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Let's try some single hooks. One, two, three. So try to bring your elbow up and then turn, pivoting with your foot. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Now what we're gonna do is one, two, hook. All right. One. One, two, hook. Gotcha. On the hook, keep your hand up after the cross, touching your face, yeah. and then come from right here. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, yep. one, two, hook. One, two, hook. Good, hands up. Again, one, two, hook. Good, three. Mm. Sorry. Three. Mm, mm, mm. Four. Mm, mm, mm. Five. Mm. I wanna start. I'm a southpaw, so maybe they should know that. <laughs> this, I'm, I'm hitting orthodox here, which feels unnatural. We'll switch it, we'll switch it back for you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Let's go. One, two, three. Mm. One, two, three. All right, so this entire time, Chris has been hitting in the orthodox stance. Traditionally, he's southpaw, so let's throw it back to southpaw stance, and I'm gonna show you guys all the movements just one more time really quickly. Okay, so let's do 10 jabs. One, <clears throat> two, <clears throat> three, Wait for the pad. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
Move back a little bit. Nine, ten. Boom. Good. Cross. One. Boom. Two. Boom. Three. Boom. Four. Boom. Good. Five. Boom. Six. Boom. Make sure you're pivoting, pushing the hip. Okay. Eight. Boom. Nine. Boom. Ten. Boom. Good. Let's go. One, two. Make sure you're really emphasizing that turn. Okay. And tuck the chin. One, two, one. One, boom. Two. Mm -mm. Three. Mm -mm. Four. Five. Mm -mm. Six. Seven. Hands up on the cross. Hands up, hands up, hands up. Eight. Mm -mm. Nine. Mm -mm. Ten. Mm -mm. Good. That's how the hook. That'll wear you out. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the hook. Okay, so one, two hook. One, two hook. Ready? <laughs> Let's do it nice and slow. The first one. Yeah. One, two, hook. Good. Again, two. Bum, bum, bum. Good. Three. Bum, bum, bum. Four. Mm, mm. Five. Six. When you throw the hook, I want you to bring it right up to your shoulder height. Right. And your left, uh, your, uh, your right hand when you throw the jab is gonna stay right by your face, and the hook comes right there. Okay. Again. One, two, three, good. Eight, nine, ten, good. There we have it. One, two hook on the southpaw uh, stance. What we're going to show you now is a knee strike. So let's get back into our orthodox stance. And we're going to demonstrate the knee strike. So uh, right foot back into our stance. Let's get ready to go. Let's go. One, <coughs> two, <coughs> three. <coughs> Back a little bit. Four, <coughs> five, <coughs> six. <coughs> now, when you throw it, I want you to try to push forward yeah. into the pad a little bit more, okay? Five, <coughs> good. Six, <coughs> seven, <coughs> eight, <coughs> hands up. Nine, <coughs> and ten. Hands up. <coughs> good. South paw, other side. One. <coughs> Two. <coughs> hands up, hands up. Three. <coughs> Four. <coughs> five. <coughs> Back a little bit. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. Six. <coughs> seven. <coughs> eight. <coughs> nine. <coughs> and ten. <coughs> Good. There we have it. Good work. Way out. <laughs> Should we do some of the uppercuts? Right, let's do some uppercuts. This is exhausting, by is the it? way. <laughs> I'm not a, uh, a striking expert by any means. All right, let's get some uppercuts. Okay. So we'll start in our orthodox stance. Let's do uh, 20 uppercuts. Let's start with our rear uppercut. Ready? One, um, two, three, four. Make sure you see the pad, then throw. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Make sure you see the pads so you know where you're hitting. One. Good. Four. Five. This hands just about had it. Make sure. Cool. Let's do five more. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Other side. South paw. One. Good. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, try not to drop it so low, okay. just let it come out. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, good work. How do you feel? I, I just feel so much more natural. On the southpaw? With the southpaw. <laughs> yeah, because that's your side, right? That's my side. So. Yeah, no, you're doing really good. Yeah. Try to keep your arms more relaxed. Yeah. A lot of the times you're forcing it, but I mean, this is your first time. You're very tense, right? Yeah, tense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a key. It's just. Be loose. Gotta be loose. Yeah. So that you can. Yeah. And so much of it's just the it's rotation. It's a of the body. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's. What I think a lot of guys they want to fight. Yeah. With just their arms. Yeah. No. They don't realize how much of the power comes. Correct. From the hips and the torso. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome stuff. Wow. So much great information there. Watch that back maybe a few times to really get the what he's trying to teach me. I can only 
take it, you know, I can only learn it so fast, but absolutely. obviously the more you watch this, the more you practice the, the technical side of things, absolutely. it's just gonna make you a, a, a stronger striker. So absolutely. awesome information. Now, Mike Zhang, <clears throat> like I said, he's a Muay Thai champion. He created a program called uh, Fat Shredder Kickboxing, and it's in the description area below. So what you gotta do is click the arrow underneath this video, look for the link there that says Fat Shredder Kickboxing, click that. You can learn a lot more about everything that Mike is teaching here today. Also, we got a free report for you down there. It's called the 10 Best Bodyweight Exercises of All Time. Click that link, enter your email, you can have that free report. Another way to get it is just to click this box right here. Click that link, instantly download that free report. Also, be sure to click the subscribe button in the bottom corner and check out this other awesome video that I know you're gonna love. Thanks for watching, thank you, Mike. We'll see you next time.